right, hello wine drinking people, we are back. And we missed a lot of, we got a lot of makeup time to do from last week in the What I Drank Yesterday section. We still got a few suppliers that stopped in on us last week, late in the week. Uh, Charles from Roll on to Be, and uh, this is a uh, great little company that specializes in Bordeaux. And we've got a couple of wines that will be here through the holidays from this company, 2000 Espirit de Chevalier. Fantastic. we got a new Medoc coming in at $15 in the 05 Vintage. Fantastic. Cheaper than wines you can buy from the new releases from Bordeaux. Hey, I've been saying for a while the best thing to shop for from Bordeaux is older vintage wines. You get wines that are more ready to drink and a lot of times for less money. All right, well, he had a wine from Chile. I was talking about how they specialize in Bordeaux. Well, hey, they do make pretty good wine in Chile. As a matter of fact, most of the major Bordelais, uh, Bordeaux negotiants and big firms are down in Chile and Argentina because they realize the potential. This bowl, bowl, bolt, bolt of cura. <laughs> One of the things I always say, please, when you're, when you're marketing wines in the United States, will you come up with a name that's easy for us to say and pronounce? The Carmenere from the Curacao Valley was very nice. Had a lovely hand of that fresh plowed earth and Chilean herbal note that you get. Uh, and lovely black, peri, black cherry and black plum fruits, fresh flowers, fairly complex bouquet. Uh, really nice concentration and depth here. Carmenere is a grape that you can make into a very interesting wine. This one was very good. Okay, next up we had our friend Brad in with a few things from Iron Horse Winery. And hey, you know what time of year it is, folks? The holidays. So you know what that means. Sparkling wine, champagne, cava, prosecco, whatever's got it is with bubbles in it, man. It's flying out the door this time of year. We've got an incredible selection in the store. We will have these Iron Horse wines at our sparkling wine tasting coming up on the 20th. All right, well, we had the unoaked Chardonnay. Not a big fan of Iron Horse's whites and pinot for whatever reason you know i've always liked their sparkling much better uh the wines the whites very clean uh somewhat antiseptic and somewhat one-dimensional for me but um <clears throat> you know the green valley three clone was all right it has a little bit of oak treatment to me uh i like a little bit of oak in my wine i think it adds a little bit of complexity especially with chardonnay the classic brute had some lovely aromas of fresh baked bread some light ginger spice and uh, some baked fresh baked apple pie uh, aromas light floral notes also uh, fresh green apple fruit on the tongue really crisp a little bit a hint of that spice on the finish and some lemon citrus uh, as I mentioned before that I think Iron Horse makes very good sparkling wines this wine was excellent next up we had the Russian cuvee and uh, the residual is a bit higher in this cuvee I always like to you know know what the difference is in these cuvees uh, a similar blend but uh, this was created for the Reagan Gorbachev summits supposedly uh, nice amount of fresh apple and uh, a little bit of toasted brioche notes to this wine also nice freshness and uh, hints of spice again on the finish and floral notes and uh, showing that slightly higher residual sugar also next up we had uh, the pinot noir which uh, the pinot noir was pretty good a little bit hefty on the price though for 46 bucks but um, you know again a little more uh, old world style here not quite as big as a lot of these California pinots had some lovely nuance and spice to it uh, nice old pinot but uh, maybe a little rich for um, you know the price. All right, next up, Fabian from TGIC stopped in with a few things from Argentina. TGIC, thank God it's Chilean. Oh, okay, an Argentina wine. I get it. Well, hey, they do have uh, Montes as the top dog in that portfolio, but they do have a lot of nice stuff from Chile uh, or from Argentina also rather. And the Caiquin uh, Malbec from Mendoza. You know, Malbec, man, if you like steak and big reds, it's hard to beat what you're getting coming out of Argentina. This wine, a really nice little value for 12 bucks. Caiquino winery we've had in the store for quite a few years now. Uh, really nice stuff. And then Pascual Toso, another winery that has been on our shelf for the last few years. This was their Reserva Barrancas Vineyard. And uh, lovely toasty oak spice showing with, along with this black cherry and black plum fruit. Nice dark cocoa and black earth also showing there. Big and chewy lots of everything ripe tannins really good stuff uh, a little bit higher in price 20 bucks and then the Arcaval Ferrer this is one of the best wineries in Mendoza they're high-end wines some of the greatest wines I think made in Mendoza hey this is a great little wine for 25 bucks you know maybe not you know the best value coming out 
of Mendoza, but a really nice wine featuring deep, dark plum and dark cherry pie-like fruit. Uh, very forward and seductive on the nose with this lovely violet quality as well. Lots of bright black raspberry fruit on the tongue. Good freshness and a lovely savory character to the finish here with some perf pronounced perfume notes also. Really nice. Another winery we've seen some great values, the Amplus Winery. Amplus 1 being a wine, uh, this is their blend. Well, we had the Cabernet uh, Pumo today, which was nice. Uh, some fresh herbs and red currant berry fruit on the nose. A little bit of uh, sweet tobacco spice in there also. Some dark, bitter cocoa notes on the no on the tongue with, uh, again, that red currant and plum fruit. Really nice structure and, and complexity and decent little wine for 20 bucks. And then um, Curveball Pinot Noir from Sonoma Coast. T-G-I-C. All right, I get the Chilean and Argentina. Now we've got Pinot Noir from them, from the Sonoma Coast. Okay, well, Garachi. Garachi? Uh, Garachi, I think that's how you say that. Vineyard is a pretty nice little Pinot Noir. Um, actually, really good Pinot Noir. And, uh, you know, for 50 bucks, we expect to get really good Pinot Noir. Very pretty bouquet of fresh flowers, exotic spices, black raspberries, and cherry fruit. This is from the Gap Crown Vineyard on the Sonoma Coast. We've got a few wines in the store, the Elman Brothers uh, and Harrington, both from Gap Crown, and uh, really like this vineyard site on the Sonoma Coast, producing some really concentrated and rich Pinot Noir with lovely silky smooth tannins and a lovely hand of spice and floral notes on the finish. And that's what I had to drink, not yesterday, but last week. All right, I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.